My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We read in our gospel today, St. Peter asking this question about how many times he has to forgive a brother who may be sinned against him. And this could be a question a number of us ask, just how merciful do I have to be? We heard earlier in our Lenten gospels that we have to be merciful as our father is merciful, but but how merciful? Like where Where does that really extend to? Do I have to be merciful this much, Jesus, or, or that much? And, and so Peter asked that, like, do I, do I have to forgive a brother who sins against me even seven times? Like seven times I have to forgive this person? And Jesus, you respond that Peter's looking at it the whole way, not what's the maximum I have to forgive someone. I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times, which doesn't mean that we all of a sudden stop forgiving someone on the 78th time, but that's meant to be a number of super perfection, that we always are merciful. We always are forgiving. And our Lord tells a parable to help make this a little clearer, to put it in context for us. Jesus says, therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. And when he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. Some other translations may just say uh, a large sum, a very large sum, but this is 10,000 talents. One talent was worth 20 years wages. And this guy owed 10,000 of those. 10,000 times 20 years wages. This is an incredible amount of money. And the king says, okay, it's it's time to pay up. You owe me 10,000 talents. And the servant, we hear, because he couldn't pay, after the master ordered him to be sold to his wife and his children, all he had, and payment to be made, the servant fell on his knees asking, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay you back. I owe you 10,000 times 20 years wages, but I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back in full. And sometimes this can be the case that we can think of when we sin, when we fall short. And if we ever think that we can pay God back for our sins, it is more foolish than this servant thinking that he could eventually pay back the 10,000 talents. We can't pay back God for the ways that we've offended him. Sin is a debt against God, and because God is infinitely good and sin is an offense against him, we incur that infinite debt. We'd be better off if we owed him 10,000 talents, but when we sin and when we sin gravely, we owe even more than that because we've offended the infinitely good God who has created us and redeemed us. And so we never earn our forgiveness. And Jesus, you're telling this parable along our Lenten journey so we can understand that the gift that you're going to give us at Easter, as you die for our sins on Good Friday and then rise from the dead, is something that we didn't earn. This wasn't owed to us in any way. It's your total mercy that you redeemed us because you're good and that we can never adequately pay you back for the ways that we have needed this redemption. You are good, Jesus, and we owe a huge debt. We hear that the master, out of pity for him, forgave him the debt. The whole debt. He forgave him all 10,000 talents. That's, that's a huge forgiveness. They didn't even set up a payment plan. 
They just forgave the whole debt, this master, because he was moved with pity. And that's what God does for us when our sins are forgiven. We don't set up a payment plan. God doesn't say, I'll forgive this many sins today and this many tomorrow. But when our sins are forgiven, they are totally wiped away. The whole debt is forgiven because God has pity on us. He has mercy for us. And so this is the great gift of God's mercy. And it's a great thing in the Lenten season to go to confession. Every time we go to confession, this happens for us, that all the debts that we owe to the good God, all the ways that we've offended God by our sins are just totally wiped away. And so as we this Lent make a good confession, right? We should make a, a really good examination of conscience. We should see all the different ways maybe we've fallen short, not so that we can sit in our shame, no, but so we know, Jesus, you're forgiving me all of this. As we calculate up our sins and we see all the little ways that we've offended God, it just further glorifies God's mercy that poor sinners that we are, we, we keep going back to the same sins, but Jesus, you want to keep forgiving us. And you show us this incredible mercy, forgiving us these huge debts. But then, unfortunately, this servant goes down the bad path. That after this whole debt is forgiven, he finds another servant, fellow servant, who owed him some translations will say a much smaller amount, but the exact amount is a hundred denarii, a hundred days wages. He was just forgiven 10,000 times 20 years wages. And he found someone who owed him a hundred days wages and seizing him began to choke him. Pay me what you owe. And his fellow servant couldn't pay. Pete, but he uses the same language. Please be patient with me. But the servant refused, and he had his fellow servant locked up in prison until he should pay the debt. And that's what happens when we are unmerciful with those around us, when we refuse to forgive those around us. We've been forgiven so much by you, Jesus. You shed your precious blood to forgive us of our sins. In our baptism, our original sin, and if we we're adults, any personal sin, was totally wiped away. And every time we go to confession, our sins are again totally wiped away, this huge amount. But when we hold grudges against other people, against our brothers and sisters in Christ, our fellow servants, when we hold resentment in our heart, when we refuse to forgive someone, well, then we are making all this fuss over a few hundred days' wages, over a much smaller amount compared to what we've been forgiven. And so we need to turn away from that. We need to say, if there's ways in my life that I've been holding resentment, I've been holding a lack of forgiveness, I've been having a grudge, then I need to let go of all of those. It doesn't turn out so well in the parable for the servant who was forgiven the huge debt but then refused to be merciful. He ends up being thrown in prison. And so we, we want to be sure, Jesus, you're warning us. You're going to pay a big price to forgive us of our sins, but we in turn have to forgive others, not just seven times, not just 77 times, but always and completely from the heart. And maybe this Lent, if we're having a hard time with grudges, if there's someone in particular that I don't want to forgive, there's someone who always gets on my nerves, there's someone against whom I have a resentment, then the first thing we can do is go to confession ourselves. Tally it up, make a good confession. See how much Jesus forgives each one of us of our sins. And then after we've made a good confession and we see I was just forgiven 10,000 talents worth of sins, even more, well then, this other friend of mine who owes me a much smaller amount, I can forgive. I for can forgive from my heart, because Jesus, you first forgiven me. We ask our mother, our lady of mercy, to pray for us in this, to show us how to live 
the mercy that Jesus, you show us, particularly in the Paschal Triduum. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help in putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.